Hi, this is Seth David for the Sleeter Group, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about how a mind map can increase productivity. Join us at the Sleeter Group. Call for information about memberships and resources at 888-484-5484. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube, join us on Facebook, and follow us at at Sleeter Group on Twitter. Stay tuned for our small business productivity tip coming right up. Hi and welcome to another video slash blog post from yours truly, Seth David of the Sleeter Group. You're having a look at my brain here. I hope that your mind doesn't look like mine. As you can see, it's kind of a jumbled mess of thoughts floating around inside this little noggin here. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about how a mind map can increase productivity, how it can help you with project management. And we're going to use the example of writing a blog post in order to illustrate one example of how this might work in your life. So at the end of this, if you feel inspired, please post your comments and let me know what you think, especially if you have, as I point out in the blog post, other ideas about how you might organize the same things. There's no right or wrong answer here. It's the whole idea of a mind map is that it gives you the ability to lay things out according to the way you think. I'm just going to use one example according to how my brain works of what this might look like. So please, please, please do not lock yourself into any possible notion that this is how it has to be done. I'm just giving you an example, especially to show you how the software works. What I would encourage you to do is think in terms of how you might do this differently. And I would love to get your feedback and comments along those lines at the bottom of the post or the video, depending where you are when you're watching this. So what is project management? Simply put and breaking the rule of using a word in its own definition, it's managing projects. But seriously, it's about getting things done, right? It's about how to get things done. We, we, at any given time, on any given day, there are things we want to accomplish, projects, right? And I like to reverse engineer these things. I like to start from the end and work backwards and think in terms of what does this look like when it's all finished? And a lot of us, I think, think of that in terms of when I hand something over and say, okay, this is done. And I like to go one step further, which is to say that what's the reaction of the end user of my submitted project? How have they reacted? Has it changed their lives? Are they ecstatic about what I've given them and, and how it's helped? Right? So hopefully we can think more in terms of taking it that extra step when we look at what the end inside is like because I think that goes a long way to helping us make sure that when we're in these planning stages that we think more in terms of accomplishing that. In other words, we're not just doing it to get it done, we're doing it to blow somebody away. Right? And hopefully that's what we deliver at the end is a mind-blowing experience for whoever is using the uh, results of our project, whatever that might be. In this case, it's a blog post. So I hope you're blown away by this video and the blog post that I've written by the time you're finished going through it all. So we're going to dig a little deeper here. Now, I'm going to uh, refer to the outline, of course, that I outlined in the blog post, which you've possibly seen by now. If not, you may want to pause the video and just kind of glimpse through what I've written just so that it all comes together very nicely for you. And then come back and click play again. That's the beauty of video. You can stop it and you can like think about stuff and then you can like play it again, right? That's why I love video. It gives you the opportunity to do that. So I talked about setting up the outline first. We have to outline the tasks. What do we have to do? What are the things that need to get done in order to complete the bigger picture project? So the first thing is I'll create a thought and I mentioned that there are three different types of thoughts. We have a child thought, we have a jump thought which is off to the side and we have a parent thought which is above. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a child thought and we're going to call this how a mind map can increase productivity. Right? That's the name of the blog post. So we're going to start there. What's the title of the blog post? With the end in sight this is what we, we're finished with. We're finished with a blog post with this title. Then I mentioned that, and again, this is just an example of how I might do it, uh, is I want to create a jump thought here and call it tasks. Simple as that. I just click the little node, drag it out to the left, and it gives me the dialogue. It wants a title. Now, this is a new, tri a new trick, a neat trick for uh, the brain, which is that I can lead it off with a comma, 
And then what the brain will do is it'll pick up on the fact that this is tied into the parent thought. So watch what it does. When I click on that here, I just see tasks. But when I actually select it, notice what it does here in the actual title. It actually brings in the related thought into the title, into the whole thing. It's a good way to keep it organized so you have that sort of trail of breadcrumbs, so to speak, as far as where you are. Because when you get so deep into these things, sometimes you can sort of lose track of where you are. All right, so we have our tasks. Now within that, what I want to do is I want to create the child thoughts for each task. So I'm going to actually uh, just click and drag here. The other thing that's cool is I can copy and paste this. So we want to write the outline. And because I'm copying and pasting as such, it is doing some funky things. So another thing I can do is with a semicolon, I can create several thoughts at once. SEO keyword research. Record the video, which of course is what I'm doing exactly as we speak. Edit the video. Publish the video. I'm separating each one with a semicolon write the blog post what else have we got embed the video in the blog post submit for review schedule for publication And then, of course, make the video public. Okay, once I've created all these, I can click my check mark off, and boom, it just drops them all in. Again, the whole trick to that was separating each one with a semicolon, and that's just sort of the brain's own syntax for how you can create all these thoughts at once. So, next thing. Now we want to be able to assign the tasks, right? And I mentioned that there's two ways I can do this. I can either use thoughts to create a team and link them over to these, which is one way and it's very effective, or I can use tags. Since I've already shown you how to do thoughts and link them and so on, <clears throat> let's see what it looks like when I use tags for this. So down here, this is my thought attachments window. So keep in mind, this is the active thought right here, <clears throat> the, the, the parent thought that I've got over here. At the bottom, I've got these tabs, I can click tags. Now I have no tags created as of yet. So we're gonna create them now. We're gonna create all the ones we need. So let's create our team. So I'm gonna add a new tag here, and I'm gonna add one for myself. And notice it tells me, use, uh, use semicolons to enter multiple tags at once. So let's just kind of add in the uh, team here. Charlie Russell, Nathan Fockler, of course, Doug Sleater himself, and Cheryl, and Jeannie, who's new with us. Let's just add these tags in, these people in. And it comes in with them all checked off because it's kind of assuming that, you know, I'm trying to uh, tag them here, but that wasn't the intention for now. I just wanted to get them created. Now what I can do is say, Okay, who's going to write the blog post? That's going to be me, right? And then let's go, who's going to record the video? That's going to be me. So again, I checked that off. Notice what it's doing is it puts the tag next to the thought here. That's really handy. I can very clearly see now who's doing what. And then once uh, Charlie approves it, he's going to schedule it for publication. So that's probably where I would tag Charlie. Now let's say I wanted to, uh, uh, see all the stuff that I'm assigned, right? What I could do is I can just click on this tag here that I've created and see what it does. It shows the tag almost the same way as a thought, but it lets you know when you move your mouse over that this is, this is a tag thought, right? And it's, now I can click on that and see, oh, look, this is everything that I've been assigned. I've got to record the video, write the blog post, submit it for review. So the tags are one really good way of doing it. Let's look at the other way now. I'll click my home button here to go back to the home thought. Let's come back. Actually, so now here's the small business productivity brain. Over here, I'm going to create the team. Right? And within the team, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create all the thoughts for all the different people. Seth, Charlie. Since we're the only two that I've used, in fact, I'll just create these. 
So what I can do actually, and a, a way to make this very easy, because again, as you can see, once I get you know further away, it's hard to see where I was. Down here, you've got navigation that shows you the thoughts you've recently accessed. So that's one way to quickly get things, and you can link things from here, right? So let's say I've got write the blog post. What I can do is I can assign myself to this task. Now again, you have to decide how would I want to do that? Would I want to do it with uh, you know as a parent thought to myself? Right. In other words, is the task going to be a parent to me or is it going to be a child to me or is it going to be a jump? Right. So let's use a jump. So I just click the little left uh, side node there and drag it right over here. So now watch what that looks like. If I click right the blog post over here, I can see, OK, I've been assigned that. If I go to and there's Charlie as a thought, if I go to uh, schedule, there's schedule. Notice Charlie Russell comes in there from the tags, but now let's say I want to do it the other way. I can move my mouse over here to Charlie, and there's the jump thought. I can click and drag from here right up there. So there's any number of ways to do this. Now let's get another one of mine. So write the blog post I already linked. Here's another one, submit for review. Let's link this one back over to me using the thought. So again, done this way, if I click on myself as the team member, now I can see here's all the tasks I've been assigned. Now, of course, once I've completed the tasks, what I can do is I, I can do a couple things. Using this method, I would simply unlink these. Right Now, the downside of that is then I lose this sort of history of the fact that I was once assigned those tasks. The other way is, as I mentioned in the blog post, I can create another one. Let's, go, let's say I've submitted it for review now. I can create a new task and call it completed. So this way I can leave myself assigned, right? But then the fact that it's completed will show up there. So I know that it was completed by me. The other the downside to that though is then distinguishing between tasks that I've completed and tasks that I haven't. So my thinking is the better thing to do would be check off completed, uncheck Seth. Now I know it was completed. If I really want to know who had accomplished the task, here's another nice thing about the brain. I've got a notes window here. Completed by Seth 7213 so I can use this notepad and each thought has its own unique notepad and has its own unique attachments window now let's go back to one other thing because now I've talked about managing the resources in terms of the labor pool but there's one other uh, resource type that I mentioned in the blog post that I want to show you and this is especially one of the things that I really love about the brain and what it enables me to do I've mentioned the brain enables me to manage files and folders right so for example I had mentioned uh, made reference to a blog post that I had written previously that covered that touched on this same topic that dealt with the brain so I want to be able to put that link in there so that when I'm, you know, as I'm getting organized, so that when I'm writing the blog post, I've I've got it at you know close reach, so I can easily access it, and drop it in and use it in the blog post. So, how did I do that? Let's go back up to the root thought here, and what I've also done, which you can also do, is I've created a link directly to that thought in which I was actually managing the process of writing and recording this video and blog post. Now what you'll see is this link actually goes to a thought that's in a different brain. When you set up your brain you can create multiple brain files. These across the top that I have here are some of the ones that I use more frequently. So right now we're in the small business productivity brain. But if I double click this it's going to take me over to a different brain which is in my main nerd enterprises brain in fact and it's going to take me right into the thought where I've actually got the files organized for this blog post that you're watching the recording of uh, right as I speak and notice here I've got my keyword ideas that was one of the tasks so I have my uh, CSV file that's got my keyword research in it this actually what you're seeing now here is the uh, Windows Explorer folder where I keep the working files for the actual video you never want to put something like a video working file in anything that's shared or synced to the web, which the brain is. The brain is collaborative, it's synced to the web. So never want to do that. Just like you don't want to put a live QuickBooks file in Dropbox, you don't want to put video files that you're editing in a place where something's going to be constantly pinging at it trying to see if it's available. So here's the Excel version of that keyword research file. And now that I've done that keyword research, what I do is I click and drag right over here into the attachments window. 
and boom. So, as always, I hope you got a lot out of this. I hope I've blew, blown you away with the uh, content here. Uh, if I have or if I haven't, please post your comments and let me know below. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, follow us on Twitter because you can be sure that we're going to continue putting out more and more exciting small business productivity content. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.